Hello guys, welcome to Ramta Solutions. Today in our lesson on future value annuities, we are looking at a case study where payments are made at the beginning of a term. When everything has been done well, you will realize that your formula is like this. Okay, you will realize that your formula is like this. So let us now investigate this case study. Okay. Now, we are saying, we're looking at payments that are made at the beginning of a term. And the case that we are looking at, we're looking at the case where Lesedi invests 1,000 rand at the, stand, at the start of each year for five years. Now, the question that one is asking you is how much will she have after five years if the bank offers her interest of 10% per annum, right? If the bank offers her interest of 10% per annum. Okay. So to answer this question, as you can see, every year she's investing 1,000 rand at the beginning of each year. So this says to us, we have a timeline. Let's start with our timeline. T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. So this is to say, the start of the first year, she's investing a thousand rand. So the start of the first year is here. This is a thousand rand. The start of the second year, she's investing a thousand. The start of the third year is this one here. She's still investing a thousand rand. The start of the fourth year is this one here. She's investing a thousand. And the start of the fifth year, she's also investing a thousand. Remember the interest that the bank, that the bank gives her is 10% per annum, right? The bank gives her 10% per annum, right? So now you need to calculate how much she will have after five years, right? You need to know how much she will have after five years. So we know, okay, we know that, okay, Using compound interest, we know that A equals P plus one plus I to the N, right? So because now more than one payment has been made, let's look at it. The first payment was a thousand. It was in the account for how long? Let's see. One, two, three, four, five. So it was in the account for five years. One plus I to the five. The second payment or the second thousand, here is it. It was in the account for how long? One, two, three, four, right? So it's, oh, let me fix this. I should say one plus 0 0.1, right? One plus 0 0.1 to the five. The second, you said it was again 1.01 .01 to the four, right? It was to the four. Let's see. One, two, three, four. Let's look at the third payment. It was in the account for how many years? One, two, three. So it will be a thousand into one plus 0 0.1 to the three. Let's look at the fourth. Here is the fourth. The fourth was in the account for one, two full years. So it's one plus 0 0.1 to the two. Now the final payment, let's see. The fifth payment was in the account for a full year. So it's to the power one. Now take out your calculator and press this so that we can find the amount that let's say you will have after five years. So I'm going to take my calculator. Let's see. Okay. 
I found my answer and my answer is 6,000, is it? 6,715 rand and 61 cents. Okay. 6,715 rand and 61 cents. So this is how much Lesedi gets after five years if she invests at the beginning of each tab. Right. So now let us now take a general case. Okay. Let us now take a general case. Okay. Let us now take a general case. I'm going to copy this case here. Okay. I'm going to copy this case here. Let me do this. Okay. Let me just copy it. And then let me paste it. Okay. Now I'm going to say, um, let's say the invest because I'm not changing the case. Let me cancel this because now I'm changing the case. I'm going to say, let's say this investing instead of a thousand, I'm going to say X, let me leave a space so I can write that X for, okay, I'm going to need five years, but I'm going to call it end. Okay. I'm going to call it end. And the interest is I percent per annum. Okay. And the interest is I percent per annum. Okay. All right. So let's do this. What I wanted to say was, this is what I'm going to do. Let's say the invest X at the start of each year for N years. How much will she have after N years? And if the bank offers an interest of I percent per annum if the bank offers her I percent per annum. Okay. If the bank offers her I percent per annum. So I am careful here that I want to work with five years. However, I'm going to call my number of years. I'm going to call them N because I don't want to work with a big number. Okay. I don't want to work with a big number. So I'm going to limit my case to maybe five years like we've been doing. Okay. I'm going to limit my case to five years like we've been doing. So what we're doing here is that we have T0, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5. Remember, this can continue over and over and over and over, right? So the reason why I am now using a general situation is so that we find a formula that can work for us. So we said she invests at the start of each year. So it will be here, 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 and here. The interest charged was I percent, right? The interest charged was I percent, right? Interest charged was I. Let me just call it I. The interest charged was I, okay? So I want you to look at this now. We're going to find, we're going to find the sum that or the amount that let's say will have after let's say five years for now it will be five years but i'm going to show you how we generalize it okay so let's go so we say so we say a equals so we say a equals remember we were using compound formula the amount that she invest she's investing at the end of each year is x what is the interest? It's I. Let's look at the first payment. It was in the account for one, two, three, four, five, isn't it? For five years, right? It was in the account for five years, right? Perfect. For five years. The second investment, which is here, it was in the account for one, two, three, four, for four years. I to the four. And the other was, will be in the account for three years and two years and a year, right? Now rearranging, okay? Now we're going to rearrange this in ascending order, okay? We're going to rearrange this in ascending order, okay? Now rearranging in ascending order, A equals x into 1 plus i plus x into 1 plus i to the 2 plus x into 1 plus i all to the 3 
plus x into 1 plus i all to the 4 plus x into 1 plus i all to the 5. So as you can see, this continues over and over and over. All right. So now this somehow looks like an like a geometric series. And I will say your first term is x into 1 plus i. Look at your r. It looks like your r is x plus uh -huh, r square over x into 1 plus i. As you can see, your r is 1 plus i. This you can see. It looks like r is greater than 1. So the formula that you're going to use, I now want you to say your sn, call it f. Okay? Your sn, call it f. Now, let's use that formula when r is greater than 1. What is it? S sub n or sum of terms is a into r to the n minus 1 all over r minus 1. Right? Moving on. Let's substitute. I said where there's sn, you put f. So we'll say now f equals, what is the first term? The first term is x into 1 plus i x into 1 plus i. What is the common ratio? It was 1 plus i. It was 1 plus i. I'm going to leave the n for now. Minus 1. Again, we said r is 1 plus i. Sorry, 1 plus i minus 1. So what does this tell us? This tells us that this is x into 1 plus i, open bracket, open, 1 plus i, close to the end, minus 1. And as you can see here, 1 minus 1, so we are left with i. Therefore, generally, we can say we have x into 1 plus i to the end, minus 1, all over i, but multiplied by 1 plus i. I, I'll catch 1 plus I. So, you, sorry guys, please bear with me, I've got flu. So, you will recall that this N, it is not necessarily the number of years. What is this N? It is the number of installments. Remember when we talk annuities, we're talking um, equal payments made at the regular intervals. Okay, so this N is basically number of payments i recall i repeat it's number of payments how to get it if you have drawn a timeline okay if you have drawn a timeline if you have drawn a timeline okay if you have drawn a timeline it'll be your n will be last minus initial plus one meaning the last time of your the last payment that the time it is and oh sorry minus the initial payment plus the final uh, sorry plus one i repeat the last payment meaning the last time of the payment minus the initial time of the payment plus one that's your that's your end now generally to get this end it's basically number of years times the frequency at which your interest is quoted. All right, so this N is basically like this, All right, generally. So now I want you to be careful. This N, I am very careful when it comes to it. I don't want you to call it number of years, call it number of payments. Okay. So we need to verify the case of Lesedi investing 1000 rand at the end, at the start of each year. Okay at the start of each year. So we have we now have a formula. So this formula I should tell you you use when payments are made at the and at the beginning of a term. Okay? You use when payments are made at the beginning of a term. Okay?
okay, at the beginning of a term. So some of you might wonder, um, won't you get it wrong or won't you be marked wrong if you use this formula? No, you won't be. You get marked wrong if you don't know the formula that you're using. But using this formula, you are also okay. Even if you were to use it without the I, you will somehow be marked. But remember, read your case properly. When you read your case properly, you will know which formula to use. Okay? So this is the formula that you use when payments are made at the beginning of a 10. Now, let's verify Mercedes. Let's verify the manual calculation. Right, right, let's verify the manual calculations. Because right now we have a formula. So what did we say? We said Lissedi invests a thousand rent. So this means X is a thousand. All right. This means X is 1000 rent. All right. Let's look at our N. Using a timeline, the last payment is made at the fourth year. The initial is made at the zeroth year. So it's four minus zero plus one. I will show you why I like doing that. It's four minus zero plus one, which is five. I know somebody says, but come on, the number of years was five. Trust me, if you can do this, you will never go wrong because there are times where payments will not be made regularly where you might stop maybe three months or three years before. Okay, so you need to be careful. So the number of installments is five. Okay, the number of installments is five. And if my memory serves me well, the interest is 0 0.1. So let's verify now. We said F equals X into one plus I to the end plus or oh, minus one all over I into one plus I. Let's see. Thousand into one plus 0 0.1 to the five, to the five minus one all over 0 0.1 and one plus 0 0.1. So please verify it guys. Punch it in your calculator and tell me what to answer. Okay, the answer that I got, the answer that I got is 6,715 rand and 61 cents. Let's confirm if this is what we got in that calculation. Now you see, it is long. Imagine if this was um, an investment that was made for over 20 years. Were well, you going to be adding this 20 times? It was going to take long, right? This is why you're doing mathematics. And now because you're doing mathematics, you are now able to derive such formulas. Okay? you are now able to derive such formulas. And as you can see, this is working and this is perfect. So this is it, guys. Remember what I had said about this formula. When payments are made at the beginning of a 10, use this kind of a formula. Okay? Use this kind of a formula. Also, pay attention to this. Your number of payments. Do not guess the number of payments by saying, because the number of years is five. Uh, the number of payments will read your question properly. That question will guide you as to how many payments one is making. So stay tuned for other questions that you're going to come across now. We're going to look for the third case study in the next video. So for now, I'm leaving you here and it's a wrap. So bye-bye.